Well, the, the first thing a copywriter can help with is to develop that initial, to find that brand voice. Um, and that's something that a business owner can use again and again. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Rebecca here with Hot Mess Consulting, and we have two new guests today for our series all about copywriting. And I want to introduce, first of all, Jessica, and I want you to introduce yourself to our audience and let everybody know a little bit about yourself. Hi, guys. Um, well, some of you may already know me if you've done a one-on-one -on -one project with Hot Mess. I might have worked with you for your about page copy. Uh, otherwise, here at Hot Mess, I write a lot of things, different things for us, emails, all our social media content. And yeah, I love uh, helping on the marketing side. Jessica is a word wizard. She has magical words. <laughs> And then we also have Alex here with us today. And Alex, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Alex Turner, and I'm also a copywriter with Hot Mess. Um, I'm part-time, I guess, and I've been helping out with the YouTube scripts and writing the blogs. And it's like, yeah, been a lot of fun working um, with e-commerce uh, copywriting. So yes. that's a bit of what I do. And we may also have some guest appearances by cats in the background. So if you see any <laughs> cats or kittens, then they're just here to hang out and have fun. So we are talking all about copywriting. And to start off with, um, what exactly is copywriting? How would you define copywriting? Who wants to give that a start? Jess? Uh, yeah, um, I'll go ahead. So there's many different types of writers in the world, but a copywriter is a person who creates content for a certain market and creates that content, that written content with the purpose of getting though that audience to perform a certain task, whether it be visit a website or buy a product. Um, so copywriting is persuasive writing, I would say. It's like writing with a purpose. Yes. I mean, every, all writing is with a purpose, but more specific goal as it's tied to, like in our case, and what we're talking about for our, our audience, the purpose for your business. Correct. What would you add to that, Alex? Um, I mean, I think that's a textbook answer on what copywriting is, as you could expect from Jess, the word wizard. Um, but I would, I just, I would just add, um, it's kind of good. I kind of encourage people to think about just anything that's written on your website as copy, it's like and newsletters, social media, your headlines, your product descriptions. It's all copy. So all the kind of marketing materials and written content on your store. That's that's copy and, um, and copywriting, I guess. So basically anywhere in regards to your business that you have words is the copy and copywriting for your business. So then if you have the words and then you have obviously the person who needs to write those words, which is the copywriter, um, what is the role like of a copywriter? What does a copywriter do, Alex? Do you know, what? I think this depends on what um, what the goal is. Um, you know, if you want the goal to be converting sales or moving from one page to another page or subscribing to a newsletter, the copywriter's job is quite, like, quite specialist and it will be to kind of use the words, to put them in the right order, to tell the story and um, to get that specific action. So it is, it's more than... Um, just sharing a news update or just seeing this is what a product is. Um, it's about eliciting that action. Um, and so I think it really depends on the goal, um, but that's effectively a copy. I just think a, copy, a copywriter just does what you ask them to do. Like we want this, <laughs> this is what, and they'll write the words and make it happen. Yes. yes. <laughs> How about you, Jess? What would you add to that? 
yeah, basically copywriters will write whatever you ask us to write. Um, but uh, yeah, like Alex said, um, in 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 this case, um, the only thing I would add would be that copywriters also um, what makes them specialists is that they have to take time to to know that specific audience that they're writing for mm -hmm. and to develop the brand language, the words to speak to, to that audience. Yeah, that, which is something I think we have a, a, we might have a blog about that, about defining your audience, right? And, and finding your brand voice and, and, you know, knowing who you're speaking to is really important as far as copywriting goes, because, um, your audience might be very different from the audience of another business and you want to make sure that the words and the language and the even like the emotion that you're trying to convey through that is speaking to your people and so you need to know who your people are um, so we do have as part of our process a uh, we have Jess on staff who helps with copywriting so when it comes to like your website or anything else any other copy writing um where is where does the role of the copywriter fit in like what the copywriter can help a business owner with who wants to go <laughs> jess go ahead um oh where to start uh <laughs> well the the first thing a copywriter can help with is to develop that initial to find that brand voice um, and that's something that a business owner can use again and again. But then there's everything else. Um, the copy for your landing pages, the copy for product pages, marketing and sales, emails, blogs, video scripts, um, ads. Very helpful to have a professional copyright to help you with ads because uh, they cost money, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Uh, what what would you add, Alex? Um, yeah, I think one of the biggest advantages of having someone else do your writing for you, so like to sort of bring in a copywriter, is that it's so hard to write your own copy. Um, and I think that something that like every copywriter that I know is like really gifted in this department of being able to like just take what um, like when we're talking about the customer avatars or you know your personas. Mm -hmm. Um, and figuring out like the tone of voice for the brand and for the that's going to relate or it's going to connect with that audience um, and then just really effortlessly being able to turn that into like persuasive copywriting so they're going to help you um, kind of on paper with your sales and your your you know your your revenue but kind of that mental load of having to like think about it and worry about it and agonize it and do it try and doing it yourself it's really hard to do everything yourself um so if you can have someone bring in i think there's like i think there's that extra bonus of um having someone else just do it for you it's yeah it's lovely <laughs> so i know that one of the pieces of copywriting and that hasn't been mentioned yet is the SEO aspect of copywriting and which is SEO search engine optimization. Um, and we have some blogs and videos that talk about SEO that um, you can check out. Um, Alex, because you're um, somebody that we look to as like an SEO strategist, can you, before we get into how, um, why, like why it matters and how it connects with copywriting, just like a brief overview of SEO, like what is it? <laughs> sure. Oh gosh. Like, S I, I mean, I could be here all day talking about <laughs> SEO. Like, it's like, it's my bag. Um, but SEO is the kind of the things that you do to your, um, your website to help it rank on Google, so to help you get found organically. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's basically everything that you can do to optimize just showing up in Google search results. Um, Am I am I underselling it here? It's really yeah. important. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it sounds so simple. Yeah, 
Yeah, it sounds so simple, but it's like, yeah, it is so important for your business. And that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, we talk about the importance of having good product descriptions and, you know, even your about page and the copy on your landing pages and all of that, though, and having those keywords, right, Alex, I know that keywords is yeah. a big, a big yeah. part of that. So it's all quite, I mean, it can get really specialist and it can also seem a little bit overwhelming. And I think mm -hmm. that's where people kind of can run into trouble and they maybe are get lured into forking out with a big SEO agency and spending loads and loads of money and not quite sure what you're getting or what you're really doing with it. Because there is, um, it is like a dark art. <laughs> and getting the right keywords, because you're matching up what, words you're using in your copywriting with what people are searching for like that's that's really what you want to do is answer answer those questions so that you right. get pulled up in, in people's search results um and there's like lots of different elements and like little bits in a website that you can um tweak and kind of optimize and there's a lot of research that can go into it um, and I'm, I'm being a bit glib, really, because this is my this is what I do. Um, and there is quite a lot of research to, to yeah. tie it all together. And but I think I think what I'd want to say as well is that you don't have to do everything. Um, there's and that's kind of what we what we focus on in some of the content we've been producing um, and putting out is about like where you can take action to leverage the most amount of results. And um, so you don't end up having to do everything. But there's a lot you can do. Um, Yes. But yeah, we'd probably be here all day if we started talking about <laughs> yes. that clear strategy. And, <laughs> and I think that's something uh, with SEO also that I've heard you guys talk about is how SEO is a long game strategy, right? It's not like you do, you just put in your keywords one day and poof, like that it results in all of a sudden your top Google result. Can you talk more about that <laughs> piece of it? I mean, yeah, it, it really is a long game. I like to say like six to nine months is probably, you know, if you've done it right, um, that's how long you're going to see, you're going to be waiting for before you start to see that traction building and getting the traffic. Because um, of course, if you've done it wrong, like, and when I say do it wrong, I mean like you're targeting a keyword that's way too competitive for you. You know, it's like um, you're up there with like the number one, um, in the world for that particular keyword like you, you're probably not going to get it so you have to do that research and kind of balance between the comp competition of a keyword um, or a keyword to a search term and kind of what's achievable for um for you kind of in your like among your competitors but it is a it's a long game it's a balancing act um, and it changes. It's always evolving. Mm -hmm. Google updates its algorithms. All the you, have to, you have to keep on top of that. Um, and um, paid ads as well. It kind of has a, that has an influence in terms of um, the keywords that you might be searching for or like aiming to rank for rather. And uh, if someone's paid a lot of money basically to, to mm -hmm. own those keywords, you might be wasting a lot of time and energy putting into your keyword strategy and putting into your copywriting all of these keywords that um you know there's going to be people paying basically to be above you so that's some of the things that copywriters get paid to worry about instead of you as a business owner <laughs> um you know in the niche that you're in in the um in the kind of yeah and depending on what your what your store is about or what your what your site is about and beyond just the website too, like SEO comes into play also with like writing copy for social media and like on Pinterest and, um, and Facebook and ads and everything. So it's not just your website that where you need to consider SEO or um, YouTube, right? YouTube is uh, about keywords as, and SEO as well. <laughs> Need more? Check out the blog at hotmessblog.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel too. Cheers!